Nation, this is John Roca, call sign The Outlaw. It's time for all of us to feel the need for speed with my non-spoiler review for Top Gun Maverick. Before I take off into this one, though, I just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below, hit that bell button as well to be alerted to all the content we drop here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Also, come and follow me on Twitch at the Outlaw Nation and on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at, at the Roca Says. Okay, strap in. We've been cleared for takeoff for this review of Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> start off by saying that there may be no bigger fan of the original Top Gun movie from 1986 than me. It's one of those foundational movies in my life that I saw as a teenager and fundamentally changed who I am as a person. It began my lifelong love of Tom Cruise as an actor, and it featured a kick-ass 1980s soundtrack that still holds up, led by the great Kenny Loggins, Harold Faltermeyer, Giorgio Moroder, and the Oscar-winning Berlin song, Take My Breath Away. In that film, Tom Cruise plays Pete Maverick Mitchell, who comes to Top Gun with his buddy Goose, played by Anthony Edwards. They have to battle Val Kilmer's Iceman to win Top Gun honors, but along the way, Goose suffers an unfortunate tragic end at the hands of Maverick while he's also negotiating a relationship with Charlie, played by Kelly McGillis. But this tragedy haunts Maverick through the back half of the movie until he eventually redeems himself on a mission and saves Iceman in a confrontation with some Russian MiGs. Top Gun Maverick picks up over 30 years later and is directed by Oblivion's Joseph Kaczynski and written by Aaron Kruger, Eric Warren Singer, and Tom Cruise's right-hand man lately in terms of scripts and directing movies, Christopher McQuarrie. Maverick is a test pilot when we catch up with him who's working on a special project for the Navy, still defying orders, still taking chances, and still pushing the boundaries of his command. When that project is shut down and he's about to be grounded for the rest of his career, an old friend reaches out and gets him assigned back to Top Gun, much to the chagrin of John Hamm's Cyclone and Ed Harris's Rear Admiral. He is tasked with training a bunch of young Top Gun pilots for a possible suicide mission attacking a uranium enrichment plant in an unnamed enemy country. The pilots are played by Glenn Powell, Monica Barbaro, Louis Pullman, Danny Ramirez, Jay Ellis, and Miles Teller, who goes under the call sign of Rooster and who we discover is Goose's son. He still carries a pretty strong grudge against Maverick for both the death of his father and other reasons that we find out in the movie. And as if that wasn't enough, Maverick is also confronted by an old on-again, off-again girlfriend who is tangentially referenced in the first movie. To say that this movie puts Maverick through an emotional ringer to atone for his sins of the past and to teach him one final life lesson is an understatement. Now, right off the bat, let me tell you that Top Gun Maverick is absolutely incredible. It is Hands down, my favorite film of the year, and it's not even close. Look, I went in thinking I was going to have to convince myself to like this movie, and we all have that experience. Certainly a lot of you went in and watched Bill and Ted face the music, and it came out thinking that you could convince people that that was a good movie, and it really wasn't. But I found myself absolutely engrossed in the story that was being told here, and in the note-perfect emotional beats as they were playing out for Maverick and being acted out by Tom Cruise. This is some of the best acting work Tom Cruise has ever done. He he is vulnerable, honest, touching, reflective, caring, strong, unsettled, and actually inspiring. I couldn't believe how much I was cheering for Maverick all over again, but from a completely different place in my life than I cheered for him when I saw him back in 1986 as a teenager. The rest of the cast is absolutely incredible as well. John Hamm doing a fantastic job as Cyclone. You know, he's found a second life doing comedies, but also coming in and playing the occasional prick in these movies, as he did in the Richard Jewell movie, as he did in The Town. He just has, an, I don't know, a knack for doing that that works really well in the right script and in the right movie, and he does a great job here. Jennifer Connelly is fantastic. I mean, this is one of the most incredible performances I've seen from Jennifer as well. She matches what Cruz is doing and is there in certain moments, certain emotional moments to kind of keep the Maverick storyline going, but also kind of take him to task, but humanize him. They do such a great job of allowing her to have kind of her own life and her own thing that she's doing. She's got a daughter and what have you, but also have these moments where she's connecting with him and she's bringing out the best in him and it helps us connect with him. So just a brilliant thing to have Jennifer Connelly do that because she's so great at doing that in a number of movies. As I mentioned, the other pilots, I mentioned all the other actors. I mean, Glenn Powell doing a fantastic job here as the 2022 version of Iceman, essentially. Monica Barbaro coming in really strong strong energy and essence in the movie. Nice to have a female pilot in this crew of dudes who are, who are going out there to pull off this mission. Danny Ramirez does a great job. Jay Ellis is really good. But Miles Teller 
brings that kind of angst and anger you need to feel from Rooster. Because Goose, you know, doesn't get a chance to go after Maverick for what he did. Does he call him out in the first movie? Sure, but, you know, he ends up dying in that first movie, so he doesn't get a chance to call uh, Maverick out for some of the decisions he made in that tragic uh, situation in the in the fighter jet. And Meg Ryan kind of lets him off the hook in the movie as well. So Rooster is the first one to kind of call Maverick to task for the things that he did with Goose. And more gets revealed here about their relationship that I think is really uh, enriching and great to see. And Val Kilmer is in here as Iceman. And you do get a couple of scenes with Val Kilmer. And I'll be damned if it doesn't 100% work. I mean... This relationship from the first movie is basically, you know, the young hotshot kid and the more settled guy who's very confident in what he can do. He doesn't have to show off. He doesn't have to go against the grain and prove anything to everybody. He just knows he's good. So to see that their relationship has matured and changed and developed into an honest, caring connection between those two comes through in the scenes that they have together. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to lie to you, I got emotional watching those scenes, just really touched because I loved the first movie so much and their relationship so much, I was really touched by their connection and the moments that they had in the movie as well. As for the overall fighter sequences, those are incredible, those are stellar, you hang on to the edge of your seat the whole time, it is completely new and updated and what they're able to do with the filming of those scenes is just incredible for 2022. Look, the fight sequences were already awesome in the original Top Gun movie, and that's why some critics complained that it was essentially fetishizing the military or advocating for the military, which I never buy and have never accepted. I never wanted to join the Navy after Top Gun. It was just a movie, but you can see here they're taking a completely different approach and showing you the wonder and the majesty of these fighter jets, but they're also showing you the danger and the real-life tragedy you may confront being a pilot in the Navy. So they don't, like, walk away from the other side of this while also showing you how incredible these choreographed sequences can be in the sky. Uh, also, the cinematography is so well done here. You really buy into a lot of these shots uh, within the film, both the intimate shots and also the wide shots. When they're on the carrier, when he's riding his motorcycle with Jennifer Connelly, when they're out there playing football on the beach, there are so many great sequences that are highlighted by the fantastic cinematography. And I think Joseph Kaczynski deserves a lot of credit for how this movie turned out. With how things went down with Oblivion and some critics kind of didn't like that movie or kind of tore into it a little bit, you wouldn't be faulted for having a little bit of hesitation wondering if this combo actually works and absolutely does. He does an incredible job directing this film. The pacing, the editing, all of it works so well. And that Lady Gaga song at the end is damn good. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets nominated for an Oscar for sure. And let me say this, what a lot of other critics have been saying, I will not be surprised if this film gets nominated for Best Picture, but I have a feeling that the Academy is going to have its guard up, its barriers up against films like this. So I wonder if it'll burst through, especially a film that comes out this early in the year, and be able to stay into consideration as we get into the latter half of 2022 and get that Best Picture nomination. It would be great. So we shall see. But as far as negative things, there's nothing negative for me to say. Uh, this is such an incredible film that absolutely moved me, touched me, took me on a ride, and then dropped me gently into my seat when it was over to make me want to watch it all over again. In fact, the, the fact that I've seen this ahead of time now is driving me insane because I can't just go in, oh, on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon and go see it in the theaters. That's how much I loved it. I will go see this multiple times. I will spend multiple amounts of money to see this movie again and again until I can own it in the 4K version when it comes out. This is the first time I've ever given a movie this on the Outlaw Nation channel. I give this film five cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats. It is an incredible movie that will absolutely move you and will absolutely take you to a whole other place and will be well worth the price of admission. And you're going to be so surprised at how well they got this movie right. All right, well, if you go see Top Gun Maverick, let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. Remember to like on this video and share it on your social media. And I'll see you next time with another brand new non-spoiler review here on the Outlaw Nation. Feel that need for speed, everybody.